He fell silent for a moment, brooding on his plans for justice. And then abruptly he said, What do the small folk say of Renly's death? They grieve. Your brother was well loved. Fools love a fool, grumbled Stannis. But I grieve for him as well. For the boy he was, not the man he grew to be. He was silent for a time, and then he said, How did the commons take the news of Cersei's incest? While we were among them, they shouted for King Stannis. I cannot speak for what they said once we had sailed. So you do not think they believed? When I was smuggling, I learned that some men believe everything and some nothing. We met both sorts, and there is another tale being spread as well. Yes, Stannis bit off the word. Selyse has given me horns and tied a fool's bell to the end of each. My daughter, fathered by a half-wit jester. A tale as vile as it is absurd. Renly threw it in my teeth when we met to parley. You would need to be as mad as Patchface to believe such a thing. Or let me be so, my liege. But whether they believe the story or no, they delight to tell it. In many places it had come before them, poisoning the will for their own true tale. Robert could piss in a cup and men would call it wine, but I offer them pure cold water, and they squint in suspicion and mutter to each other about how queer it tastes. Stannis ground his teeth. If someone said I had magic myself into a boar to kill Robert, likely they would believe that as well. You cannot stop them talking, my liege, Davis said. But when you take your vengeance on your brother's true killers, the realm will know such tales for lies. Stannis only seemed to half hear him. I have no doubts that Cersei had a hand in Robert's death. I will have justice for him. I, and for Ned Stark, and John Aaron as well. And for Renly? The words were out before Davis could stop to consider them. For a long time, the king did not speak. Then very softly he said, I dream of it sometimes, of Renly's dying, a green tent, candles, a woman screaming, and blood. Stannis looked down at his hands. I was still abed when he died. Your Devon will tell you. He tried to wake me. Dawn was nigh, and my lords were waiting, fretting. I should have been a horse, armoured. I knew Renly would attack at break of day. Devon says I thrashed and cried out, but what does it matter? It was a dream. I was in my tent when Renly died, and when I woke, my hands were clean. Sir Davis Seaworth could feel his phantom fingertips start to itch. Something is wrong here, the one-time smuggler thought, yet he nodded and said, I see. Renly offered me a peach at our parley, mocked me, defied me, threatened me, and offered me a peach. I thought he was drawing a blade, and went for my own. What was his purpose? To make me show fear? Or was it one of his pointless jests? When he spoke of how sweet the peach was, did his words have some hidden meaning? The king gave a shake of his head, like a dog shaking a rabbit to snap its neck. Only Renly could vex me so with a piece of fruit. He brought his doom on himself with his treason. But I did love him, Davis. I know that now. I swear I will go to my grave, thinking of my brother's peach. <laughs>